An inverter is a device that can take DC power and turn it into AC power, which is quite useful, depending on the situation. <laughs> Man, I can't be bothered to do a good intro today. Let me just say that for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to be talking about inverters, okay? That's what this video is. So before we get started, why don't we remind ourselves what the difference is between DC and AC in the first place. DC stands for direct current, and it means that the electric current flows through some kind of load in one constant direction, from positive to negative. This is what happens if you connect something to a battery, for instance. AC stands for alternating current, which means that the electric current goes back and forth repeatedly. It's It alternates, right? And this is the kind of power that you get from a power outlet. So here in Europe, from a standard power outlet, the electric current goes back and forth 50 times per second, 50 hertz. If you live in, in America, it'll be 60 times a second, 60 hertz. So how does an inverter take DC power on the input and convert that into AC on its output? It uses a circuit that we call an H-bridge. An H-bridge is a pretty straightforward circuit. It consists of just four switches with a load connected in the center. The DC power source is connected to the top and bottom of the H-bridge circuit. What this circuit allows us to do is to control the direction of the electric current through the load in the center. So if I set the switches like this, for instance, the current flows through the load from left to right. If I set the switches like this, on the other hand, the current will flow through the load from right to left, in the opposite direction. And so if we switch between those two states repeatedly, we've created AC power, right? We just have to do that you know, back and forth 50 times a second. It's as simple as that, really. Now, normal mechanical switches won't be fast enough to switch 100 times a second. So instead of using mechanical switches, the H-bridge uses transistors. So in my drawing, I've drawn them as mechanical switches because that's easy to understand. But know that in reality, these are actually transistors, right? Semiconductor devices. They don't have to be transistors. They can be other types of solid state electronics as well. But they operate as if they are switches. They're just really fast. That's basically all there is to it. But this design is not quite perfect, or at least the way we drive this is not quite perfect. You see, the output from this circuit is AC for sure, but it's not quite like the AC from an outlet. You see, if we look at the AC current from an outlet, it looks like a smooth sine wave, like this. Whereas the AC that is produced by the H-bridge is a square wave, like this, right? Because it's produced by switches opening and closing, so it's on, off, on, off. It's, it's square. But we don't want that, okay? Or at least, you know, in, in some applications, we don't want this. We, we want to replicate the pure sine wave from a normal outlet. So how are we going to do that? Well, one way of doing it is to use a so-called modified square wave. So what that means is, as the name implies, you take the square wave, but you modify it a bit so that it's more similar to a sine wave. So what you can do is instead of operating the age bridge where you switch between the two states directly, you can add a little pause in between there. So you can add a little pause where all the switches are open and no current flows. So instead of switching directly from state one into state two, you switch from state one into the pause state where there is no current and then into switch two. And that gives you a waveform that looks like this. That's the modified square wave. You can see those pauses in there where there is no current. So that is still really ugly and still really square, but it's less square than the actual square wave. And so it's a bit more like a real sine wave. And this is the approach that is used by cheap inverters. So if you go into a hardware store and you buy like some inverter that produces a good amount of power for a low amount of money, that's probably the technique that it uses. And you can read that on the box because it will say modified square wave or modified sine wave. I'm not quite sure what it'll say, but if the word modified is in there, 
This is the waveform it produces. So the next question is, how do we produce an inverter that actually generates a real smooth sine wave? We use a technique called PWM, also known as pulse width modulation, which we've actually talked about a long, long time ago on, the, on this channel before. But basically what we do is instead of switching these transistors at relatively low frequencies, so 100 times a second, we switch them much faster. So we switch these transistors thousands of times per second, generating a high frequency pulse train that looks kind of like this. So you can see that overall we are producing the general shape of a square wave. But you can see that this particular square wave consists of smaller, you know, shorter pulses. And what's important about this is that you can see that these pulses don't all have the same length. Some of them are a bit wider and some of them are a bit shorter. This is important because the width of these pulses affects the average voltage of the signal. The peak voltage is the same all the time because all these pulses have the same height. So that there is only one peak voltage, but the average voltage changes because when these pulses get wider, on average, the voltage is higher because there is more time the voltage spends being high because the pulse lasts longer, right? Whereas if the pulses get shorter and narrower, on average, the voltage is lower. So, if we plot out that average voltage as a new line in the graph, it looks like this. So you can see that the average voltage resembles a sine wave shape. But of course, that's just an average. In reality, it's not a sine wave yet. So the, sure, the average resembles a sine wave, but it's still just a train of pulses like this. So what we do have to do is feed that into a filter to filter out the high frequency components. And after that filter, then we have a pure sine wave. And that filter is a remarkably simple device because it can consist of just one inductor, which is a coil of wire, and one capacitor. So it's a very simple passive device. We feed it through and boom, there's our pure sine wave. Uh, so that's how you generate a pure sine wave, still using a normal H bridge. So all inverters basically use an H-bridge circuit. The difference is, how do you drive that circuit? Do you drive that circuit in a pretty dumb way and generate a square wave or a modified square wave? Or do you drive that H-bridge in a more clever way, you know, using PWM, because then you can produce a pure sine wave. So now that we know the theory, I thought it'd be a good idea to have a look inside an inverter so you can kind of see what the hardware looks like because that's always interesting. Now, to me that's always the most interesting part. So let's just go ahead and open up this inverter that I have on my desk right here. So what we've got here is a pretty small power inverter. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you know people might bring this along to the campsite or whatever to power some AC equipment from the battery of their car. So you connect this to the 12 volt DC battery of your vehicle, right? And then at the output here, you have your, you know, your 230 volt AC. And you can plug your laptop into that or whatever uh, you might bring along. So if we open this up, we can see that there is a whole bunch of electronics inside this. And one thing that I'm interested in in particular is these four transistors right here. So these four transistors are actually the H-bridge that we just talked about. So these four transistors are the four switches in our H-bridge. And then these two wires that go to our power socket, right, these two blue wires connect to the circuit board right near those uh, transistors. So those are actually the wires that connect to our load in, in the schematic. So this is actually the inverter. This part of the device is the inverter. So then you might be wondering, what is all this stuff? You know, there is so much more to this than just the inverter. Well, this stuff is to convert the voltage. This is a DC converter because this thing is actually a double purpose device. Strictly speaking, this is not just an inverter. This is also a voltage converter. This is not just turning DC into AC. It's not just an inverter. It also turns 12 volts into 230 volts. So it's also a voltage conversion device and all of this 
is a massive DC converter that takes 12 volts and ramps it up to some high voltage DC and then the inverter turns that into AC power at the output. So you can see the majority of space inside this thing is actually taken up by that DC converter, by the circuit that is used to increase the voltage. So this is actually the reason why, uh, why consumer grade inverters are so bulky. It's because they have all this extra stuff in them because they need to convert the voltage. If you had an inverter that worked on, you know, let's say 300 volt DC instead of 12 volts DC, then you didn't need all this stuff and the inverter could be an absolutely tiny little box because it only needs to contain a bunch of transistors and that's it. You know, maybe a, a bit of cooling, you know, a bit of a heat sink, but that's about it really. Uh, so that's the majority of, of stuff that is inside one of these one of these inverters is actually a DC converter to change the voltage. We might talk about DC converters a bit more in a, in a future video. So there you go, that is how an inverter works. That's kind of what it looks like on the inside. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.